الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الحمد لله الحمد لله فض القرآن وأن سنة على فهم السلف الصالح قرآن كلام الله قرآن إن as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the Qur'an إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم this Qur'an guides to that which is upright الله أكبر in tafsir al-Sa'di and tafsir ibn Kathir of this verse إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم أي أعدل this Qur'an guides to the that which is upright, meaning a'dal, that which is most just. The Quran calls to justice. In Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan, Allah commands with justice and righteousness. Qul amra rabbi bil qist. Say, your Lord has commanded with a balanced way, a just way. Qa'iman bil qist. Established upon justice. شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأولو العلم قائما بالقسط. This is the way of Quran calls to uprightness and from that meaning is justice and from the other meaning of إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم أقوم أي أوضح الله أكبر. Go back تفسير ابن كثير and تفسير السعدي أوضح the clearest way. This Quran guides to that which is the clearest way. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تزل طائفة من أمتي على الحق ظاهرين لا يضرهم من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم حتى يأتي أمر الله على ذلك. They will not cease to be a group. Clearly upholding the truth. Not being harmed by those who oppose them. And before that, not being harmed by those who try to deceive them, nor by those who oppose them, until the command of Allah comes, and they are upon that. Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi al-Madkhali, hafidahullah, from the scholars and teachers in Medina, he said, look how the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa said, that this saved group, and at the heads of them are the prophets and messengers, and those that came after them from the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, and the tabi'een, the tabi tabi'een, the scholars who came after them until today. The heads of them are the ulama. The ulama of Ahl sunnah La tazal ta'ifatun min ummat al-haq dhahireen. Clearly upon the truth. You don't know who the alim is, who the scholars are? There's something wrong with you. As the poet said, La yasihu fi adhani shay'un idha ahtaj ila nahari dhalilu. It's clear. The alim is clear, is known. The ulama are known. And they are recognized by other ulama as ulama, as scholars, upholding the truth. Qala Allah, qala Rasulullah, qala Sahaba. This is what they go by. Narrations by athar. Alayka bi athar as salaf wa in rafadaka nas. So upon you is to hold on to the athar, the narrations of the salaf, even if the people were to leave you. As Al Awza'i rahimullah mentioned, even if the people were to leave you, hold on to the narrations of the salaf. The ulama of Ahl sunnah they are upon athar. Qala Allah, qala Rasulullah, qala sahabatu laysa bitamwihi. Ma al-ilmu wa nasbaka li khilafin safahatan bayna rasuli wa bayna ra'i fulani aw faqihi. It is foolishness to compare the statement of anyone, even if he's a alim, to the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They go by Allah said, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the companions conveyed. They go by this, by these narrations. عليك بالحديث وأهله فرأي ليل والحديث نهار ولربما غلط الفتى سبل الهدى والشمس بازغة لها أنوار. Upon you is to follow hadith and its people, the علماء. عليك بالحديث وأهله فرأي ليل والحديث نهار. For opinion is like night 
unclear. While hadith is clear. Hadith is clear. Opinion is like night, unclear. While hadith is clear. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, what did he say when he heard somebody uh, add something to the religion? Try to bring his opinion. He said, leave your opinion in your pocket. This deen is based upon qala Allah, qala Rasulullah, qala Sahaba. It's not based upon opinion. This is the usul. Going back to the nas and ijma' to the text Quran and Sunnah and the consensus of what the companions were upon primarily the Salaf as, as Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said in the last part of Wasatiyah he said the ijma' that is binding primarily is the ijma' of the Salaf because it was easy to ascertain ijma' then it was easy to ascertain consensus then and do you think Sahaba when they unite they will go against the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam impossible Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah said in his book Al-Usul min ilm al-Usul it is impossible. Sahaba unite upon a matter and they go against the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is one. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al-khulafa al-rashidin al-mahdiyin. It is one. Abdu alayha. He didn't say abdu alayhima. Abdu alayha. Bite onto it. The sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the sunnah of the khulafa al-rashidin al-mahdiyin. Abdu alayha. And the significance of that. Rashidin al-mahdiyin. What is the significance of Rashidin al Mahdiyin? The Sahaba, عنهم, they were upon ilm that is Mahdiyin, ilm al Nafi'. And Rashidin, Amal al Salih. With these two, as Shaykh Salih Fawzan mentions, with these two, ilm al Nafi', beneficial knowledge, and Amal al Salih, al Rushd, then the deen will become uppermost. Who will let the Arsal Rasulahu bil Huda, with deen al Haq. Regarding this verse, he is the one who has revealed, uh, who has sent down the messengers with, with what? With guidance, meaning beneficial knowledge. Mahdiyin. Wadin al Haq is Amal al Salih, righteous actions, Rashidin. Just like the Sahaba, Radil Anum were, Al Mahdiyin and Rashidin. And with that, the deen spread far and wide. So if you go back to the way of the Sahaba, as Imam Malik rahimullah, had mentioned, alayka bil amr al-awwal, upon you is to the first state of affairs, is to go back to the original state of affairs, then the deen will be uppermost. Wa antum al in kuntum mu'mineen. You will be uppermost if you are true believers. Starting with aqeedah, first and foremost. Starting with aqeedah. Yes, aqidah comes first. First we learnt, as Jund ibn Abdullah said, first we learnt Iman. Then we learnt the Quran. And that increased us in Iman. First we learnt Iman. Aqidah. Then we learnt the Quran. Ahkam. The rules and regulations. And that increased us in Iman. So aqidah comes first. Starting with the belief, with the six beliefs. And then following that up with action the five pillars and how great is this month for action this is the month of action Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seen is Samir and Basir he hears and he sees and you do one bad deed you get one huh? you get one sin you do one good deed it's multiplied ten times as our Imam recited this evening in Surah Ghafir وقال الذي آمن يا قوم اتبعوني أهدكم سبيل الرشاد يا قوم إن هذا يا قوم إنما هذه الحياة الدنيا متاع this life is only a play and amusement هذه الحياة الدنيا متاع وإن الآخرة هي دار القرار and the hereafter is the abode that is the reality that is where you're going to go forever where you're going to be in paradise forever or in the hellfire forever for the disbelievers, people of shirk and those who have major sins if Allah does not forgive them if they don't make tawbah and Allah doesn't forgive them then they will be in the hellfire for a period of time and they will come out if they are upon tawheed shafa'a al-nabiyyun wa shafa'a al-malaika wa shafa'a al-salihun wa baqiya shafa'a al-rahman 
what is left after the prophets intercede on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and the angels intercede on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and the righteous intercede for, the, to, for those to come out of the hellfire and for others to be raised up in paradise. Whose intercession is left? Baqiya Shafa'atul Rahman. What is left is the Shafa'a, the intercession of a Rahman. He will take out of the hellfire those who haven't done any good deeds. لم يعملوا خيرا قط إلا التوحيد. As in Muslim Imam Ahmed, إلا التوحيد. They haven't done any good deeds except Tawheed. You see how important Tawheed is? Tawheed is the heaviest on the scales on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Shaykh Rabbi Hafudullah said, the proof of that is what? The Hadith al pitaqa A man will come with 99 scrolls of bad deeds. One scroll is if you, so many sins as far as the uh, eyes can see. Yani one scroll, about 99 scrolls. That will be put on one side of the scales. And La ilaha illallah will be brought out in a card, put on the other side of the scale, and it would outweigh all of those 99 scrolls of bad deeds. La ilaha illallah. Tawheed. Naam, Tawheed is heavy on the scale. The heaviest on the scales. That's why the Messenger وسلم, all his life is calling us to Tawheed. All his life is warning us against shirk. He, وسلم, at night, he would seek refuge from shirk himself. Allahumma inni a'udhubika an ushirika bika shay'in na'lumu wa astaghfiruka lima na'lumu Fearing that he'll fall into shirk. Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam Rabbi jilubni wa baniya an na'bud al-asnam inna hunna adlanna kathira min al-nas Fearing for himself and his progeny falling into shirk. Yes, because ikhlas is not easy. It's easy to slip. It's easy to fall. And it's, who's guaranteed Jannah, ya Abdullah? Who's guaranteed paradise? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq used to say, if one foot of mine is in paradise, I will not be safe until the other one is there. Umar ibn Khattab عنه, he would see a fire that is kindled and he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, can you be patient upon this? Sahaba radiallahu anhu, fearing the fire. Who, but what about us? Are we guaranteed anything? Guaranteed anything? Nothing. Who knows just before an arm's length between you and paradise and just before you die, you fall into the hellfire. You follow that which is destined for you. Naam, hadith of Ibn Mas'ud. وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ يَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ بَيْنَهَا إِلَى دِرَاعِ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمْلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا Just before you die, ya Abdullah, are you guaranteed anything? Just before you die at arm's length to get to Jannah. But what's written for you is written for you. Ya Abdullah, we need Allah. We need Allah for protection daily, morning and evening, to protect ourselves when we sleep, when we wake up. Protecting ourselves with the dhikr of Allah. Shaitan is haris. Shaitan is so concerned that you be from the hellfire. That you be from the people of the hellfire. He's so concerned for you and me. We're not guaranteed anything. Any one of us could die this evening. And who, who knows what we die upon. The last deed, what is it going to be? And we pray with the imam. Alhamdulillah. Man sallam al imam hatta yansaraf kutiba lahu qiyam al-layl. Whoever prays with the Imam until he leaves, the whole night is written for him in prayer. Whoever prays Isha in Jama'ah, he has half of the night in prayer, reward. Whoever prays Fajr in Jama'ah, he has the rest of that half of the night in, in reward. So what about if you pray Fajr in Jama'ah, Isha in Jama'ah, and you pray with the Imam until he leaves? You have two nights in one. Allahu Akbar. Just like the man who fasts three days in the month, he has, it's like he's fasted the whole of the... It's like he has fasted always. And at the same time, he fasts Ramadan and follows it up with six days of Shawwal. It's like again, he has another year of reward. Like two years in one. Allahu Akbar. The reward of Allah is immense. Allah <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allah gives and He gives and He gives. Al Jawad from His names is generous, and from His names is, al is, is, is that He is kind, Rafiq, and he's, uh, He gives. What have we done? What have we given? Allah gives you before you even give Him. He gave you life. You didn't give Him anything before that, did you? Did we give Him anything before He gave us life? 
كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم امواتا فاحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم ثم اليه ترجعون كيف اس لايف وي ور ديد وي ور نوت لايف اي جيف اس لايف وي ديد نوت جيف هيم اني ثينج بيفور ذات اند ذن وير از اور جراتيتيود وير از اور جريتفولنس اور شكر شكر تو الله سبحانه وتعالى هو هيز جيفن اس صلاه God in our prayers from the greatest forms of dhikr wala dhikrullahi akbar the salah salawatul khams katabahunna allahu fi yawmin wa layla five daily prayers Allah has written in the day and night how is our fajr how is our dhuhr and asr hafidu ala salawati wa salati al-wusta wa qumu lillahi qaniteen and stand up for Allah continuous in your worship qanit is a person who is continuous in his worship he loves his ibadah he loves his salah he loves the standing he loves the sujood he loves the ruku' alladheena hum ala salatihim daimun surat al-ma'arij continuous upon their salah not one off they love the ibadah inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawquta established in the prayer on time ya bunayya aqim as-salah ya bunayya aqim as-salah wa'mur bil-ma'ruf wanha 'anil munkar wasbir ala ma asabak luqman saying to his son establish that prayer from the first commandments he told him establish the salah and Sheikh Rabbi Hafidullah on this verse he said establish the prayer is not just pray establish is upon its prerequisites when you the worst thief is the one who steals in ruku' he steals in ruku' he doesn't do his ruku' properly establishing the prayer is establishing it on time وَلَدِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Those who are neglectful of their prayer Look at Tafsir ibn Kathir سَاهُونَ عَنْ وَقْتِهَا They are heedless about its time They are heedless about how to do it properly وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاتِ قَامُوا كُسَالَ When they stand up for prayer They stand up lazily They don't enjoy it The Messenger says Love the salah جُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ The coolness of my eyes in the prayer أَرِحْنَ بِهَا يَا بِلَالِ Love to pray. Love to... Because salah is that great ibadah which has Qur'an. It has tasbih. It has... As in the hadith of Mu'awiyah ibn Hakim al-Sulami. He was praying. And then... He was praying behind Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Hadith of Sahih Muslim. He was praying behind Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. And in that salah, somebody sneezed. And he said to him, رحمك الله. Huh? He spoke in the salah. He said, Rahmatullah. And the Sahaba, they want him to be quiet, so they're looking at him. And he says to them, Malakum Tandaruna ilay. Why are you looking at me? Huh? He's speaking in the salah. Then they beat their thighs, they want him to be quiet because this is a salah. When he finished the salah, he said, I never found a teacher better than the Rasul. He didn't tell me off. He didn't insult me. He just said these words. Inna hadihi salah. La yasluhu fiha shay'un min kalam al-nas. Innaha tasbihun wa takbirun wa qira'at al-Qur'an. Three things. Salah, speech of the people shouldn't be in it. Ya'ni, in other than sujood. Of course, sujood, you can ask whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just before the taslim, as Shaykh bin Baz rahimahullah said, two places you can ask dua. The dua in the sujood. And just before the taslim. But other than that, you're not allowed to, uh, to, to speak and say anything except that which is pre, uh, pre, uh, pre, uh, prescribed in the sunnah. And so they said, Inna hadi salah la yaslahu fiha shay'un min kalam in nas. Inna tasbihun. Tasbih. Saying, Subhanallah al azim in your ruku' And Subhanallah, Subhanallah rabbil a'la in your sujood. Tasbih. Wa takbir. Allahu Akbar and Qira'at al-Qur'an and recitation of the Qur'an. This is Salah. This is the Salah. فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا A people after, they discarded the prayer. They became neglectful of the Salah and they followed their desires. Shaykh Salah ibn Fawzan al-Fawzan al-Hafidullah said, if you are neglectful of your prayer, you will definitely follow your desires. Because the Allah said that in Surah Maryam, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةِ You see, you neglect all of your prayers, you will follow your desires. Oh, how do I get salvation? Establish salah. How do you get guidance? Establish salah. 
how do you remove problems from your life? Establish salah. As the Messenger Sallallahu establish it. Naam, sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as if you have seen me pray, Hadith Bukhari Muslim. Pray like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi prayed. Not like all the other groups. They say, just pray. Yes, people come and knock on your houses in large multitudes. They knock on your houses and they say, come, come to the masjid, come to the masjid. Taib, once I come to the masjid, you're going to teach me how to pray? No, just pray. Is this the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu No. Shaykh Muhammad al-Banna, rahimahullah, he went with this group once to teach them. This group called Jama'at al-Tabliq. He went with them to teach them. Huh? Not that we advise you go with them. Because why? As a group, you can't change the group. The group is the group. It has its own uh, principles that they go by. Which is, let us concentrate on fada'il a'mal. The, su- yani, the voluntary acts. As for the fundamentals of this deen, that, is not, that we don't want to split up the ummah, they say. We don't want to split up. Tawheed unites. It doesn't split. Sunnah unites. It doesn't split. It is shirk that splits. It is bid'ah that splits the people and disunites the people. Tawheed unites. Aqeedah sahihah unites. So he went with them to advise them. When he started telling them how to pray and showing them the sunnah, one of them, and he said to me, his name is like your name, alhamdulillah, it wasn't me. He said to me, he said, that, yeah, uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad, this joke, he, he jokes sometimes. He says, yeah, is, is your, like you, like your name. He came and he said to me, it is their ra'is, their head. He said to me, no, no, no. Just tell them to pray. Don't teach them how to pray. He goes, but Rasulullah said, Sallu kamara aytumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me pray. He said, we don't have this. In our jama'ah, we don't have this. We just tell them, pray. How you pray? But what about the hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood? A man stands up for prayer, he gets one tenth of the reward, one ninth of the reward, one eighth of the reward, one seventh of the reward, one sixth of the reward. Not, oh, you don't, you never know. You may not get the whole reward in the prayer. Why? Because you did not pray according to the sunnah of Rasulullah You did not establish the sunan. You did not establish that which is obligated upon you in the salah. So you didn't get the whole reward. So how is it then just pray? Did the Prophet say just do hajj? No. He said, Khudu ani manasikakum. Take from me the hajj rites. Show us how to do it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who establish the salah. And not of those who discard their prayer and lose their, their life and follow their desires. The salah, the salah. The Prophet said before he died, as salah, as salah, wa ma malakat aymanukum. Umar ibn Khattab on his deathbed. On his deathbed. He asked, did the prayer get established? Did they establish the prayer? Because he was stabbed during Salat al-Fajr by the Majusi. So when, he, the, when, they, when they carried him to his deathbed, what, his, what did he ask? He asked about the Salah. And you know what he said after that? He said, لا خير في الإسلام لمن ترك الصلاة. There is no good for a person's Islam if he, discard, if he leaves the prayer. The pact between us and them is the prayer. Whoever discards it, whoever leaves it, he has disbelieved. Neglect the one who leaves it purposely, not out of laziness only, but purposely he leaves it by rejecting it. Then he has left the fall of Islam. Serious. The salah is serious. Amud al Deen. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are. They are always continuous upon their prayer. For indeed, as our Imam has recited today, indeed, Fariqun fil Jannah wa Fariqun fil Sa'ir. The two parties, party in paradise and a party in the hellfire. And you heard about the party of hellfire. When the angels asked them, as in Surah Al Mulk, Alam yatikum nadir. Didn't no warner come to you? Bala, qadja'ana nadirun fakadabna. Yes, a warner came to us, but we denied. And we said Allah did not reveal anything. And similar to that is in Surah Zumar at the end. When the gatekeepers, they will say to them, did not want to come to you? I said, yes, they came to us, but this is what Allah has written for us. وقالوا, uh, and the other verse. وقال الذين في النار, and the people in the hellfire. 
they will say to Khazinati Jahannam. They will say to the gatekeepers of the hellfire. Ud'u. Ud'u Rabbakum. And you khaffifa anna yawman min al-adhab. Call upon your Lord to reduce one day of punishment. Reduce. Shaykh Nuthaymi rahmanullah in his tafsir of this verse. He said, first of all, the, the people in the hellfire, they were asking Allah initially. But Allah will rebuke them and say to them, اِخْسَعُ فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ Remain in it and don't speak. This is what you're deserving of. This is what you're deserving of. You turned away. So now they are, they, they're now asking, they asked Malik, يَا Malik, لِيَقْضِيَ عَلَيْنَ رَبُّكَ Oh Malik, let your Lord destroy us. Because the fact that we are alive in this hellfire, we are, is it pain? It's pain. Every time a skin is burnt, another skin is changed. And it's burnt again. May Allah protect us. Allahumma ajinna minan nar. Allahumma ajinna minan nar. Allahumma ajinna minan nar. And then they say, وَقَالُوا لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمْ وَقَالُوا لَدِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمْ اُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ Now they're saying, you ask your Lord. They didn't even say our Lord. You ask your Lord to khafif, not even remove, just to reduce. And not forever, just one day of punishment. The serious. Serious. And none of us are guaranteed that we are free from the hellfire. Ibn Abi Mulaika said, I met 30 of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. This tabi'i, this success, he said, I met 30 of the Sahaba. And each one feared hypocrisy amongst himself. Who is guaranteed anything, Ya Abdullah? Our life, we have to reflect on it every day. And we have to reflect upon our situation. Read Quran, listen to Quran, and see the authority of Allah, and how great Allah is. Alimul al ghaybi wa shahada, al kabir al muta'al, who sees everything. Al kabir, the greatest. Al muta'al, the highest. Al awwal wal akhir wal zahir wal batin, the first and the last, and the highest and the nearest. He knows everything that we do. Aina tadhabun, where are you going to hide? Where are you going to go? Nowhere to hide. We're going to go back to Allah. Wa anna maraddana ila Allah. Fasatad kuruna ma aqulu lakum wa ufawidu amri ila Allah. May Allah protect us and forgive us. May Allah accept our fasting. May Allah accept our qiyam. <coughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us far away from the hellfire. Remove our faces far away from the hellfire. For indeed, reality is coming to each and every one of us. Death is closer to us than you think. It's coming. Every day is getting closer to your grave. It's coming. You get white hair, your bones start creaking, and then what? People start calling you uncle. Yes, before you're just brother. Now it's uncle. And when you get older, it's granddad. And then, then, what? then what? Then you're getting closer to your grave. Slowly, slowly. Disbelievers, they don't realize that. Allah said to them, step by step, without realizing, Give them in full. But, when my, but my plan is mighty. My plan is mighty. Allahu Akbar. The plan of Allah. Naam. Take your soul. Baghtatan. Baghta, in all of a sudden, he died suddenly. Or they say he, he had an untimely death. There's no death that is untimely. Every death is timed. Every death comes on time. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدِ And the agonies of death come, that is what you are running away from. It will come to each and every one of us. What have we prepared, Ya Abdullah? Are we ready? To meet the angel of death? Are we ready to meet our reckoning? Are we ready? Are we looking forward for those angels to say, Salamun alaykum? Are we ready for that? Or the other, the angel that will rip out the soul? That is the, those are the angels who rip out the soul of the disbelievers. Is that the one we're waiting for? Or is it the angel who will come and say, in the, as, as in, in the because they're upon tawheed, upon salah, upon ibadah, upon sunnah, 
from the way of Sahaba, Faham al Salaf, no bid'ah, no compromise. تتنزل عليهم الملائكة لا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا no fear for you no distress for you وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون and glad tidings for you is paradise that which you were promised نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم this is what we, we hope أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إن الله الرحيم